morning. My name is Zane Preston. I'm an associate editor for the Harvard Journal of Middle Eastern Politics and Policy. With me this morning is Raed Shafardin, uh, the first vice governor of the Bank of Lebanon. Uh, Mr. Shafardin, thanks for joining us this morning. Pleasure to be with you, Zane. Um, please tell me a little bit about the current research that you are doing. The, uh, the current paper which I had presented yesterday at the Kennedy School of Government had to do with the Arab countries in transition, specifically the uh, governance, trying to integrate governance, governance and growth. And actually, the, this is the sixth of a series of papers that I have written so far, looking at the non-political dimensions. The political dimension, which is definitely a very important one, has been uh, this predominant in all the discussions. And for some reason, there are other dimensions which are as important and need to be integrated as well, which are not taking into, taken into consideration. And this is why I've looked at the economic and financial implications. Then I looked at the monetary policy, what's happening, the different monetary, monetary policy regimes. The third paper was on women and the role of women in Arab uh, in transition, winning in difficult times, I called it. The fourth one was on social and cultural dimensions, and I called it observations of a concerned man, N not being an anthropologist nor a sociologist, but I had my views, although it was a research paper. The fifth one was on the, uh, the divide, the be, be between Sunni and Shia, or between the Muslims and Christians in that part of the world. And this was the one which I presented yesterday, was the sixth in the series. In that, I just tried to highlight the importance of governance. And actually, we looked at so many governance, World Bank governance indicators, looked at the UNDP uh, definitions, looked at the ESQA, and looked at the uh, OECD papers and what kind of uh, a model we can uh, we can use to understand the exact uh, the exact dimensions of governance. Looking at the political, looking at the social uh, and the institutional. So we looked at several dimensions, and this is what uh, what we looked at. And unfortunately, the none of the Arab countries do uh, are are really high up in the ranks. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, before 2009, they were in the 50th percentile. And it slipped down into the 40th percentile, talking about uh, worldwide. And the only one dimension which has improved was the voice and accountability, which certainly because, but that improvement didn't really make up for the deterioration in the other dimensions of the uh, other, uh, other uh, indicators. Mm -hmm. So in your paper, you... Um you talk about how the the need for uh, grassroots level changes. What can economic institutions do to bolster these kinds of changes? Looking at it, if you're talking about specifically financial institutions, we can look at it as a matter of fact in two dimensions. One is the financial institutions, which is specifically the banks. Mm -hmm. And we can look at the regulators as well, as we, for, for example, we as a central bank. The financial institutions can do a lot, especially with the badly needed PPP, private-public partnerships. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of uh, uh, areas that the uh, commercial banks and investment banks, general financial institutions can pitch in. But there should be some plans. Mm -hmm. So Arab countries in transition should look at those elements. They should look at the transportation. They should look at the infrastructure in general, at the uh, uh, education. So there are so many different dimensions they have to look at and have programs ready so that the financial institutions can pitch in. As for the uh, central banks, they can certainly pitch in as well by doing so many, uh, by actually uh, pitching in. For example, the Central Bank of Lebanon did provide a, a stimulus package in 2013 mm -hmm. to stimulate the economy because so this is one of the examples that a central bank can do can step into the challenge and really pitch in so what we did is we threw, we uh, availed to the commercial banks and investment banks in Lebanon a pa stimulus package of around 1.47 7 billion dollars at 1% interest they in turn have to avail it to the consumers. and But specifically, it has to be provided in or availed in productive uh, projects, mm -hmm. not just, just you know, going out and buying cars. They have to be productive. And we were very keen. We looked at uh, specific areas, and they were earmarked for specific 
sectors of the economy that are more uh, that are productive. Another, and we did the same, in eight, and that has contributed actually in 2013 uh, GDP by 1.7 percent extra to our gross domestic product. And we did the same for 2014 for the current year of a stimulus package of 800 million dollars. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the things that a you know, talking about the economic elements or the specifically the financial uh, uh, institutions can do be on the regulatory side or the the, uh, uh, the commercial side. Great. Um, you and other experts have discussed the lack of um, tangible skills that Arab youth have that alienate them from the job market. Um, as your role as the vice governor for the Bank of Lebanon, um, what do you see the Bank of Lebanon doing to uh, bolster skills for Arab youth? I think this is the one million dollar question, trying to match the uh, skills of people with the job market. Mm -hmm. And this, this uh, idea, as you said, so many different people have researched it and we have talked about it in Lebanon in so many different ways. It's a real challenge, mm -hmm. but it's not only a central bank challenge. This is more of a government kind of challenge because Education system has to pitch in. So what kind of outcome are we getting uh, f of, of those young men and women? Be at the elementary level, secondary level, uh, be vocational training or the university level. So what is it? How are we really getting them ready for the job market? So that kind of uh, match between them, just to, between the demand and the supply, has to be really looked into. As for us, let's give you an example. And because of the challenges that we face in Lebanon, and because we have different types of challenges as well, uh, we have the uh, our own the, the 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 conflict at the in our borders. We have a job market which is not uh, enough for our graduates, mm. and accordingly, what we decided to do in August of 2013 is to uh, come up with an idea that can. Incent the uh, the and uh, really activate the knowledge economy. So what we decided to do is allow for commercial banks, and we allow for the first time commercial banks can pitch in as part of their equity, up to three percent of their equity, in a startup, uh, accelerators, just incubators, anything which has to do with that intellectual capital of ours to, to stimulate that. We allowed them to do and to go into this. And we didn't push them, just we allowed them to go and they have to look at the files if they qualify for them. Now they're getting in as investors rather than as uh, availing credits. At the same time, we decided that we would guarantee 75% of those loans that are availed to, to those or the, the equity participation that is availed to the, uh, to those startups. So this is one way of how a regulator can really get in the heart of economic development and can stimulate and can steer an economy in one, uh, in one direction uh, or another. Because uh, with the, 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 not much, not much uh, economic activity is there because of the internal conflicts, because of the uh, stagnation, internal stagnation, and because of the external conflicts that we see. Accordingly, this is what we decided to do. Great. Well, Mr. Shafferdine, thank you for joining us this morning, and uh, good luck for with the rest of your time here. Thank you very much, Zane. Thank very you. kind of you. Best to you.